What's up, everybody? My name is Kuck Hemmets. This is DJ Shadow. And welcome to the Freeze video. Freeze. Can the ice explain to you what we're going to do Fine. here. First of all, we work this show with three cameras. Three cameras? Yes, we have three cameras. We have one on the center over here, uh -huh. we have one on the side, oh, yeah. and one over here on this side. Oh, now, all three of these cameras are immobile. They're where? They're fixed. I know. As DJs like Marvsky and the other two cats come in, yeah. could you just tell them, like, try not to adjust, like, the, the weights or, like, the, you know what I'm saying, the arm height, that kind of stuff. They don't need to go there. sound and let you know you're all right.
Phoenix, Arizona, DJ Seekfoot. How many of us are with Let's do it. Seekfoot fans, all right, make some noise, everybody. What's up? Make some noise. Come on, everybody. What's up? Seekfoot, it's on you. The best thing ever happened to Los Angeles. It's going to be here.
close to me right there. All my rock people out there. But y'all, right over here to my right, this is DJ Shadow. But it's the world's most greatest beat collectors and turntablists. They've got skills and records. So we heard.
Damn, them lights is bright. Anybody out there catch a brain freeze tonight? Anybody? Because y'all about to get the brain freeze right now. Y'all ready? Check this out. We got the monitors straight. Turn up the monitors. We don't care. It's only our ears and shit. You know what I'm saying? Just turn that shit up. Want to pick up the root down going out? Every Thursday night, you know what I'm saying? Oh, my man Miles from the Breaker Store. Y'all heard of the Breaker Store? Yeah. them up. <laughs> Thursday nights at Gava. Y'all let me know when you're ready. You good? Josh, you ready? You ready? Yeah, make some noise! Yo, 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 check, 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 check. Yo, for real, yo, what's up, LA? Y'all are chilling. What's up, fools? Hey, for real, for real, for real. Everybody, for real. This is from the bottom of my heart. This show would not be here tonight if it wasn't for this man's love for his hometown, y'all. All right, go, Jimmy. He put the whole shit together solo. He put the whole shit together solo. He bought y'all. He got. I mean, he had some help, y'all. But for real, my man. He got y'all the video games, he got y'all the slurping machines, he even got that sign up there. He got the space. Yo, so I mean that, I mean that. We're all guests. Yo, 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 I'm this about is to interrupt, show. man. Yo, but really the 45 King right here, DJ Shadow. We wouldn't be doing all 45s if it wasn't for people like this. So pick him up. Y'all ready? <laughs> real quickly, real quickly. These kids are about to set it off and give y'all the brain seed. So make some motherfucking noise for Cut Chemist and DJ Shadow. Thank <laughs> you. 
we miss it.
I'm Kai Chemist, this is DJ Shadow, and uh, this is Freeze. Wake up, Chris. And just the sheer soul excitement of it all. What's up, everybody? I'm Kai Chemist, this is DJ Shadow, and this is Freeze. The video that takes you behind the scenes, the whole Freeze phenomenon. Is that yours? Yeah, it came with yours. What's up, everybody? I'm Cut Chemist. This is DJ Shadow. And this is the Freeze video. Video that takes you inside the phenomenon that is Freeze. In which uh, many, many glorious DJs got down, did their thing using all seven inches for the whole night. We're trying to give everybody, you know, uh, what different kind of flavors come on the 45. So on that note, we hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I know we did. You know, and I've just personally like to say, it, I hope we can do it again. Let's start with the basics, which is, how did the idea for the original uh, Freeze uh, mix come along? Started with uh, Future Primitive. Mark Hurley asked me uh, if I wanted to do another set after the shortcut set. And um, he wanted to get Shadow involved. So I said, well, okay, uh, that sounds great. If uh, Shadow and I are going to do something, it should be something probably involving uh, all 45. So then it turned into the whole show was all 45s. It was Z-Trip, Newmark, uh, Shortcut, um, who was a no-show, and Rasta Q-Tip and Cool Chris. I came up a week early, and we had spent, you know, a week going through 45s. I brought up what I had, going through his stuff. <clears throat> and we were putting a set together, so we were rec recording all the rehearsals. We were just using it for reference, because we knew we had such limited time, and the gig was coming up. And after the show, uh, I think you called me up, and you're like, you know, I was listening to these, and... Uh, you know, we might want to think about putting this out. How close to the original mix was the, the CD that you guys ended up producing? The mix is in two parts. And um, I think I ended up using the whole first part from the second to last rehearsal and the whole second part from this last rehearsal. You know, when we did the show, it just seemed like um, nobody really <laughs> nobody really got it i think we both felt like like why were we tripping like nobody's tripping yeah so why were we tripping but then what happened is after a couple days people started to kind of talk about this thing that happened and people were curious about it and started asking both of us about what happened and after that started to kind of snowball a little bit that's when i decided to go back and listen to the dads I think simultaneous to all this, there started to be this dawning of awareness about funk 45s and 45s in general. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it all kind of, you know, converged. Another factor was turntablism as a thing. Well, let's go back a sec. Why did you want to go with a 45 only thing? Um, 
Because I wanted to look through his 45s, pretty much. At that time, I certainly knew it, and I think a lot of people knew that, you know, DJ Shadow has a lot of great 45s that uh, he needs to share with the public, and maybe he's not as forthcoming as we'd all like him to be. So this would be a good opportunity to uh, bring that out in the limelight. Jurassic 5 through the 90s was a group that I used to point at with Quant within Soulside slash Quantum and be like, see, look, they rehearse, they do this, they do that, they try this stuff, they incorporate the DJ. I had an album release party in LA, and at the same show, I was impressed because Luke was DJing, and um, I remember you mixed the Magic Carpet 45 of the Blowfly thing mm. with Iron Leg, or Chocolate. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Soul Generation. I remember being like, I remember watching you do it and being like, oh, you can do that? You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Oh, you're like, but doesn't it ever slip? You know, the same old right. things that you know, always hear people talk about when they talk about missing 45s. In my mind, there was 45s and my passion for funk on 45, and then there was hip hop. And the two, aside from occasionally sampling something, never really, I didn't ever grow up in an environment where I could spin both together. What was the trial and error process like in terms of figuring out the music that eventually you guys ended up using? It, it was a fine line between, you know, obscure and and some some things that people would recognize and um, things that were just you couldn't deny on the dance floor, mm -hmm. you know. But I remember we spent the first couple of days just going through records. We we didn't even really hit the, the rehearsals until we knew we had, you know, a good stack of we know that these will work. Um, that's why, you know, stuff like Keep On Dancing, okay, uh, sampled by who, whoever, so you know that, you know, this might be obscure here, so we'll fly that in and, and then center it around the, uh, the mascot record, which, uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it starts out just like, um, why, this is a record that's cool that I found, we gotta work this in. Okay, cool, we've set that there. What do you think of this record? Eh, eh, maybe, or no. So you start out with three piles, and then you start playing with the ones you know you want to use. And then it's kind of like, you, you know, one of us would just call out, you know, it'd be funny, or you know, it'd be fat, or whatever. You know, and then you just start working on blends, like, okay, this record to that record, that's a lot. And then once you have like 10 of those. Yeah. I remember, yeah, for product placement, it, it was a lot more surgery involved, where it was obviously a lot more intricate. So, you know, we had to work on these sections, you know, at a time, and then try to bridge them and and the most grueling part of it I remember was us we had real specific dialogue that we needed and so we had to go through these dialogue records you know, even milk one. whether it was like oh. no no it, oh, no, I know no, it was about. brain trying to find the word brain on like some doctor 45 <laughs> and we we're just sitting there listening and listening to records and then finally we just zoned out because how long can you listen to those it could say brain five times and we would have missed it because we were just like oh. you know we finally found this word and that word and stitched them together and, and fortunately know. enough that stack of there was a stack of little radio public service announcement records that allowed us all these little yeah, segues and snippets. Yeah, radio spots were, I mean, within both product placement and brain freeze. So uh, you guys do the show. There's a little bit of buzz about it. You decide, hey, maybe we should put this out. What's the, what's the next step that you guys took from there? I mean, art direction at some point, who came up with sort of the visual concept for it? And I went through a few things. Um, I remember well, right off the bat, I was like, we got to call it Brain Freeze. And then we, we hired uh, Brian Cross to do the photos. And Josh ha uh, had this idea to, you know, stand a back to back B Boy style with our Slurpees. Is that what it was going to be? That was the first one, yeah. And yeah. B Plus was like, yeah, that's cool. Let me just, you know, do my B Plus thing and like take these little snapshots of things and just kind of work. Uh, we got thrown out of the first 7 Eleven. Um, and then the next one, near my mom's house, they were like giving us their, their coats, like, yeah, man, get in our uniforms, and like, take these pictures, and then he had this cool idea of where we hold up the 45 and look through the hole, and uh, that was the one. It's, we sh I guess we should point out, the, the Slurps uh, 45 was, was always a central theme, even at the primitive show, because you guys had a slurping machine. Actually, no, we didn't have a slurping machine. We just brought some in a cooler. Oh, at the okay. uh, at the future the primitive show. Yeah, yeah, that's show. right. Before the gig, yeah. we went down and. I, and sure you know, longer. like we were passing them out. And I just remember people. If you look at the tape, which we'll probably edit to, people just like, what? You know, like I don't get any of this. Yeah, man, hell yeah. Who doesn't want a slurpee at a show? 
all along it hasn't been about like okay we have to be the world's best DJs even though there are things that I think we've done in both sets designed to make DJs be like oh yeah. whoa yeah. okay that's you know four copies of the same record or like, oh, trying to beat juggle of 45 you guys pressed a thousand CDs on the, on the front end. Yeah. Now, a lot of people have mentioned this in hindsight, but didn't that seem like a low number to you, given both of your reputations, given the amount of interest that could have been uh, But, like, developed. you know, it was a totally new territory for anybody. We didn't know if anybody cared. Yeah. Based uh, on the show, we didn't think anybody oh, okay. would care. Yeah. And we didn't have any distribution. We didn't. It was um, me driving down to Aaron's, taking them 10 at a time. Um, certain stores wouldn't take it. Um, because they didn't know what it was, or mm -hmm. you know, and and part of it was the packaging. You know, the front cover has no title or anything. Mm -hmm. It's just the picture. Yeah. Somebody was buying my copies that I was bringing to Aaron's and, and putting them on the internet and selling them for I don't know, lots more money. Hundreds, I think. Probably. Um, then I started realizing, whoa, you know, there's obviously a demand. Mm -hmm. The first I ever heard of a bootleg was I had to go to Sundance Film Festival in like January, January 2000. 2000. And somebody waiting in line to see Dark Days asked me to sign this. Oh, yeah. I, you know, people would actually be kind of upset that, like, why aren't you making more? And I remember writing this little commentary back to people, like, okay, you caught us. We have nothing better to do <laughs> than to sit around and, like, stockpile quantity of our own hard to find and stuff then sell it on eBay. and then sell it on, on whatever yeah and we're sitting there signing them and then selling them on eBay I remember feeling like okay we're gonna do another thousand to make you guys happy and, and then, that's then that's it and I remember afterwards just having to defend myself over and over and possibly even to Lucas saying like no I already told people 2000 is it and like I can't go back on that word as it turned out because of the you know the legal stuff that ended up happening it's a good thing that we didn't do more because mm. it happened right on the heels of us finishing that next order mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and then that's when the bootlegs really started to pick up because we couldn't our hands were yeah, tied there's no, yeah, there's some and then that's when you start seeing vinyl you know CDs of I mean, a whole bunch of different the types of CDs. compilations that came out right. the fall of that. Exactly. Yeah. So, and, you know, these guys aren't getting busted, so what the hell's going on here? I don't know. If you guys create a CD that's of collectible 45s, and the CD itself becomes a collectible item. So. Yeah, I mean, and I never really thought about CDs as collector's items until this. Mm -hmm. I mean, CDs to me were just, you know, they were convenient, but it wasn't anything I ever thought anybody would collect. Yeah. The only thing left to do is to just knock it out of the park with a whole new project. Yeah, I mean, to me, product placement was almost a direct result of some of the sour grapes that I started to hear. Explain that. You know, they probably got sick of seeing our names, used to sell things on eBay. They probably wondered why. How come nobody's putting my name in a subject heading on eBay? <laughs> You know, like, I'm a good DJ, too. Yeah. Well, fuck these guys. Yeah. You know, there and was you, a lot of that. There was a lot yeah, of that. Yeah. There was a lot of hating. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. And a lot of people going like, well, this isn't anything new. You know, I was using 45s back in there, or, you know, and, you know, all these old DJs and, you know, Zulu Nation, everybody was, and, and all that was true, and, and none of that was ever debated by us. Yeah. So, but the, we felt like the best thing we could do, rather than getting in a war with words with anybody, is to just do one that just knocks them just cold and dead silent. Another thing that's kind of funny is in the brain freeze era, the 45s weren't worth as much as they were later. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. So we weren't really caring as much about, like, you just use them and put them in the sleeve, okay, fine, but yeah. it's, it's... We're DJs and this is what we do. Your whole 45 set went missing, was it after the Portland or after the yeah, Seattle after, show? Yeah, after Portland. Okay, so what, what, what does that mean? What happened with that? Things got real chaotic after the show that night. Thought I had the records. They weren't there. Um, I didn't find out I didn't have them until we flew 3,000 miles across the country. The next day, I would get up around 5 in the afternoon. I'm oh, done, done, look in my bag. Hmm, the 45s aren't there. We called the, the club and they'd found them uh, in a drawer. And they were safe, fine, everything's cool. So we hired a, a courier company to go pick them up and fly to put them on a plane and fly them to New York. Because it was like Sunday, too. Yeah. Uh, no problem. Um, somebody got wind that this was the plan and they had usurped the courier guy and snuck in there and act posted up as the courier guy and took the 45s. They were stolen. They were stolen from the club. 
<clears throat> and uh, and then you know it turned in this in this big thing of trying to find it turned into a caper, trying to find out who took them and who was involved. And it was a long kind of I think two month grueling process of shaking people down with my manager Dan. And um, finally they they appeared. Not a single one missing. As far as I knew, nothing was Q-burned. Yeah. Um, everything was intact and actually in order, which was odd. So, yeah, they had just been, like, they were just taken out of that drawer and kept. For two months. But it took two months to try. I, I, I remember it being something like that. Yeah, it was odd. Oh, yeah, that was okay. So then I had to do the next three shows without this whole, you know, basically I was up there for, like, three hours. And, but now, a whole, you know, a whole big part of why people were coming to the show was not happening. So yeah. I had to explain that at all these sh <laughs> three shows. And to make Luke feel bad, I'd have him work the lights. No, I offered to do the lights. Oh, was that what it was? Yeah. I, I, I felt, I already felt bad enough. I mean, you know, I, I was neglectful, you know. I'm sure it was, it was, it was chaotic and everything. But, you know, you forget records sometimes. Yeah, everybody does it. Sure. And um, he had a great light show. Um, there you go. Yeah, black stage when he's done. Boom. Yeah, second, third career winning for you. I think know. so. I was crabbing on the light yeah. board. Exactly. Doing the yeah. faders. Yeah. I remember in New York saying, um, I, remember. I was upset about something. I don't remember what. Maybe my needles were jumping. I said, all right, let's have a real DJ come down here. So Luke <laughs> made his way there from the. <laughs> when Dan and I were, were shaking these people down, we. Um, I thought it would be good to record the conversations and just in case it went to court and had a evidence. And of course, Classic. to be admissible, Brilliant. I asked everybody, hey, is it okay we're going to record this conversation? Yeah. So, um, some of these were really funny. I mean, it was just like some of these characters, we were good cop, bad cop, and you know, it was hilarious with Dan on the phone shaking him down. And I'm like, hey, man, you know, the whole deal, I thought it, it might be good material to make a song out of. So, I did a, get a really good one with Biz. Um, telling me that I messed up and you gotta treat your records like your girl, like all this stuff. It was, he was like, that sounds great. Give me a brow yeah. beating. Yeah, no, yeah, that's definitely going on. This. Yeah. <laughs>
Hello? Yeah. We're like autopsy specialists. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad way to look at it. I prefer to look at it as a biopsy. It's still living. We don't think it's just like rhythm. We have, we have sounds, tones. You know, you have uh, notes. You have the small tones and notes here. It's music playing together. That's where high pitches and low pitches. It's, all this is notes for us. We, when we play rhythms, we are singing songs in our minds. I had to be on stage with musicians, people that study music, you know. I never had the chance to, to study music, you know. I don't know what's, what's chords, notes, you know. I don't know none about this. Yes, I, I guess come very natural. It's not. A, it's not. A, we don't learn about this. We take some some kind of, of samba, okay, some kind of rock. Why not? And some kind of, of, of jazz and, and do the, the rehearsal. Let's try this this kind of beat. Where the fucking records at? <laughs> style and a little bit new comes to to engage yeah, for the, the, the both sides. So, wow. Casting, Paul Humphrey, Durf, Nuts, Mamon, Wilson Das Neves, Jay Rock, Kimmy Stambu, Mad Lib. I think in Brazil we start now, huh? Eh? 